Well, a Florida Christian school is getting backlash after an email has surfaced that, well, basically the school is adhering to biblical principles, something that they have done since the 1970s. But in the culture that we live in today, nobody really cares what the Bible says. Who, who cares about a code of conduct, right? I mean, you're being offensive. You're being hurtful. We can't have that. We're going to talk all about this here, guys, in less than 10 seconds. Stick with me. First, if you could, if YT even lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, if you could, please share the video. That's the only way it's going to get any attention. Hit the bell, subscribe, wear the glasses because I'm blind. And if you guys could donate here to my ministry, you like what I do, you want to help support, see more information in the description. Let's talk about Grace Christian School in Valrico, not too far from Tampa. Now, this email was sent out to parents by school administrator Barry McKean. It was actually sent out on June 6th, but a copy of this email is now floating around because here we are getting ready for the start of the new school year. And that's exactly what this email had addressed. And this is what it basically had to say here in the subject. It was addressing parents. For the upcoming school year, these are the policies that you need to adhere to. And I got to say, you know, it is refreshing to see Christian schools taking a stand like this. I, I know it sounds strange, right? Because you just expect them to. But when so many of them have fallen, when so many have given in to the culture, they become affirming, right? They've ignored the Bible. They don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. All of that, they compromise. It is nice to see one that is not willing to do that, that sticks to the Bible. And so this email, which I will include a copy of, you guys can check the link in the description here, written by Barry McKean, basically tells parents this, in order for your kids to attend this school, we will be addressing them by, you know, their biological sex on their birth certificate. We're not going to call them any other name other than what is stated on that certificate. We are not into the identity stuff. We're not going to call them something that they are not in any way, shape, or form. And, and he lists in the email here, you know, all the different things, whether you're you're gay, you're this, you're that, you, you feel like you're this, you feel like you're that, whatever your tendencies are, if you're trans, whatever, nope, not having it here. And again, it was reiterated. This has been our policy for the longest time. This isn't something we're just making up here overnight. And it even gets into the fact here that if any student is living a lifestyle that is not in accordance with the word of God, which by the way, they list all the scripture in the email as well. I mean, they did their homework on this. Back to everything that they said with the word of God, which is very important to do. These parents knew exactly what to expect now if you want your kid to either attend the school or keep attending the school. They backed it all up with scripture. If anybody was not willing to do that, they would be asked to leave the school. Those students would be effectively kicked out. Now, what brought this all on? Apparently, it had been known, I guess, for years because former students, after this email started surfacing around, some which had even graduated last year from the school, spoke out about this email and the policy. But really quick, guys, let me put a plug in for my Patreon. If you guys only watch my videos through YT Alerts, you're missing a ton of my content. Sign up on my Patreon. It helps to bless the ministry here. You can do it for five bucks a month. You get alerted for all the video content I put out. Plus, you can comment there completely censorship-free and send direct messages. Or, hey, if you prefer, you can help me out over on PayPal. All those links are down below. I got no monetization here, so this is my only way of letting you guys know how you can help donate and contribute if you enjoy my work here in the ministry. All the links are below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So you had seniors that graduated who said they were a part of the rainbow community. Now they made it through last year, but they said there is a, a secret group that has had to hold strong at Grace Christian School. They could not tell anybody that they were in fact living this lifestyle because they knew that if they did, 
they would be kicked out of the school. None of them revealed their identities because, you know, of fear of harassment and everything like this, but they spoke about the fact that the policies of Grace Christian School were hurtful and how some students were, you know, in the bathroom at times crying about this. And so now that it was apparently made known to the school that several of, you know, those that were attending were a part of this community, well, this is why they are reiterating this policy now and sending out this email saying that if you're caught, you know, if you're having these tendencies, if you're in these relationships, uh, if you want to be called something different than what you actually are, you're going to be asked to leave. Now, here's my question. If you are so concerned about the policies of the school, why are you attending a Christian school to begin with? You see, no one wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to address that. They just want to say that the school is being hurtful. You can go to a public school. Nobody is in any way forcing you to attend a Christian school at all. But yet, you choose to do so. Many of these former students even said that Barry McKean during chapel would talk about the fact that if you were in the rainbow community that you were going to go to hell. Now, he has refuted that. He said that he's never said that. He's talked about sin before and all of that, but he says this is not about condemning anybody. This is about living a biblical-centered life, which is what the school, again, has always taught. But And, I'll, and you'll see this in the, the article that I'll put below, but just reading what these students have to say, keep in mind here, none of them at any point reference the Word of God. You know why? Because they don't care. They don't care. They talk about a God that won't accept them. Like, how, how could that be? He, how could he be exclusionary? That's not true. They literally put the scriptures in the email that was sent out on June 6th that covers all of this. I, I'm not even going to say all of it because, I mean, they, they did such a great job with this. They took every single potential identity, whatever you think that you are, they back it up with the word of God and it calls it out for what it is, which is wrong. And it's against the Bible. It is against what God says. But they don't bring that up at any point. Because it goes back to what I've always said. This is about getting schools like this and churches, people to what? Conform. Right? To give in. To affirm, to concede, whatever you want to call it, to compromise, to fit what they want. They don't care what the Bible says at all. But for Grace Christian School to hold strong to this is a testament. You're going to find very few here in the last days, whether it's a Christian school or even a church that is willing to hold fast. You know, the Bible says in the last days that there would be very little faith left on the earth at the time of Christ's return. That's exactly what we're seeing. You're going to see little pockets of it here and there, like with this school in Florida. Little pockets, but not many. Not many at all. Some parents, in response to this email, stated that they have a 16-year-old daughter who attended Grace and after receiving this email, said that, well, she's no longer attending Grace, that she is now transferred to another religious school. Keep in mind, not a public school, but another religious school where she is free to live her life the way that she wants and they don't give her any problems at all. And she's so happy, right? You can just, you know, affirm them all you want to, affirm them right to, into the hands of the enemy himself. Because that's what you're doing. You think you're showing them love and you're not. And you can call us all the names of the book and that's totally fine. But you know what? If you're willing to speak truth, that's what the Lord looks at. Because we are also held accountable for what we say. And if we gave these people a chance, did we actually speak the truth to them? No, you don't want to like, you know, you're not going to browbeat them and tell them you're going to burn and whatever. No, no, no. You have to tell them what the word says, obviously. But it's the way that you can do it. By affirming, by compromising. And again, it shows you 
how many Christian schools have just surrendered, basically. They've given up. Yeah, you can live whatever you want. Forget a code of conduct. Here's the thing. You shouldn't even need a code of conduct. To be honest, the Bible is your code of conduct. This is the instruction on how we are to live our life, right? But the fact that the school even has to, that being Grace Christian, has to even reiterate that is very telling in the times that we're living in right now. So credit to them again for willing to take a stand. And this is actually, you know, a, I did a video, a similar incident took place at a Christian school in Louisiana. And I, I had to tell you guys this because I had people in the comment section on that video who even watched me pretty consistently disagree. Very telling. And I said it was going to happen. I said it because they kicked out a girl who was getting ready to start kindergarten because she had a family that was in a same-sex relationship. Two moms. And they said, upon learning about that, they said, you know what? It's not going to be a good fit here. They expected not only for their students to live moral lives, but also the parents as well. And I backed that up, and I still do to this day. But many people came out. They were against what I had to say. They were against what the school had to say. Hey, you know what? Again, you got to be willing to stand for truth in these last days. It means you may not have a lot of friends. You may not be popular. You may have to stand alone, but is that something that you're willing to do? Because remember, you stand before God alone at the end of time anyway. So just look at it as good practice, right? You want to hear him say this, well done, my good and faithful servant. No one else will be around you, whether it's family, friends, or coworkers, it doesn't matter. It's you and him. That's it. But what matters more to you? Affirming? Making people feel comfortable here on this earth? Or pleasing God? That's a question you have to ask yourself. I'll leave it there. I'll put more information on this in the description. I'm not done just yet, though. I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that's you, you're watching this video right now, you're someone that has not yet received Christ into their life, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to do just that. This is a prayer that you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But I'll tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, anything in your life that goes against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.